It's been a while since I've done a video on my Eurac gear and I'm here to finally change all that. Uh, but before I dive in, let's just get this one thing out of the way first. Uh, some hate Eurac modules and everything it stands for. Some absolutely love it, uh, bordering on maybe needing intervention. And there's those of us who got into it headfirst, uh, but then after a while just kind of questioned everything about Eurac modules in general, feeling super disillusioned, but finally, you know, just made peace with it. If music is a lot like making chicken soup, making music with Eurac modules is a lot like making chicken soup from scratch. And by scratch, I mean like making your own broth, uh, making your own noodles uh, from flour, making a huge mess generally. And by the way, it doesn't even guarantee by no means that your Eurac chicken soup will be any good or better than the one you just straight bought from the grocery store. But it does make you appreciate how the soup is made. And I think if you are an aspiring chef, this could be very useful. Hence, for me, I find that the biggest benefit from owning uh, just modules for some time now has been this, something akin to like deconstructing synthesis, how sound design works and learning and appreciating everything that goes into it. So not necessarily about finished tracks. The way my modular rig is set up, it's not like this one giant rack. Uh, rather, it's like a whole bunch of little skiffs like strung together. Each skiff has like a bit of a theme going on for it as well. Some are granular themed, uh, some are like a, basically a drum machine. And this silly one is just like all mutable instruments only skiff. And as much as modular synth is at times touted as this like grand end game of all things synthesis, I think it's mostly just a cool, fun, niche, nerdy hobby. Uh, it can tend to be a little expensive, unfortunately, but uh, it's a collection of serious and not so serious set of gear for fun and exploration. Building a giant Eurac wall wasn't really for me. I wanted things to be not just modular, but modular at like the skiff level. This was really so that I can make these thematic skiffs that can be moved around the studio as needed. Focus on a few modules at a time, working on smaller patches, but when I do need to make a big patch, uh, though, I can just bring them all together. So first skiff to do the honors, which I think is very fitting because Intelligel modules were the very first modules I bought. Uh, they are the modules that got me into modular for <laughs> better or for worse. So quickly, if you're wondering why this skiff is made entirely of IntelliGel only modules, the reason is, well, there's no reason. It's just nerdy and kind of cool. Now, I don't want to talk too much about the skiff itself, mostly because I want to talk about uh, that in another future video that I'm working on. Uh, but it's also from IntelliGel, the, the skiff. And what I mean by skiff is the case. Uh, and pretty much every skiff that I own is from IntelliGel. While I have a few gripes with it, I still highly recommend it. And uh, these IntelliGel skiffs, if you're willing to spend a bit more, 
you know, for great looks and general high quality build. So let's start with the One U modules first. So we've got this Noise Tools One U by IntelliGel coming in at 99 bucks, which seems like a fair price. So this module, I think, is generally pretty useful and desirable. Uh, it's kind of one of those no-brainer modules should you own a skiff that accommodates One Use or any case that can support that format. As the name suggests, the module generates noise, uh, pink and white, along with uh, sample and whole circuit, and this like slew time knob, which is also super useful. Uh, the first case uh, use was honestly just using it as kind of like an analog pulse clock generator, just taking the pulse output to um, a clock in of something and just like twisting it and getting a lot of control, which is super fun. I know it can do uh, so much more than that, and um, it's just like a cool little utility um, must-have, I think, uh, one new module if you own a one new skiff. So this FSR here uh, stands for Force Sensing Resistor. The uh, official explanation from IntelliGel is Force Sensing Resistor that senses touch and pressure to a whole other level of expression of your synth, uh, which sounds super fancy, but Honestly, this has been just really useful as kind of like a debugging and troubleshooting tool while patching, you know, so uh, if something is like not quite right, you just need to like send a signal, uh, CV or gate, you know, you, um, you press this just to kind of, again, debug and troubleshoot. It's definitely cool that it's like pressure sensitive. You can kind of hold it and perform it as, as needed. Uh, it's certainly not like a Tetra pad, which is also by IntelliGel when you get a whole lot more advanced touch gesture control. But again, it's just this little one new unit where it's just, you can like super quickly output CV and gate signals with a touch and uh, ends up being just a great little utility uh, one new module. Another super useful tool, uh, it's a malt, it's a buffered malt, so it's powered. Uh, just again, super useful utility, especially because my overall setup sends stereo signals around a lot and having like this malt module makes my patching a whole lot easier and cleaner than like stacking cables so uh, there's the malt one thing i started noticing uh, in my modular collection as it was growing was a need for these utility modules especially mixers and vcas these two uh, mixers here these are one new mixers that are ac coupled so you can't handle cv signals but it's like super cheap and it goes really well with uh, my unique sort of granular modular based Eurac uh, setup. I'll get into this uh, in a later uh, video, but you'll see that from my other more core types of uh, productive skiffs, my Eurac setup is heavily based on granular modules and, and the unique overflow and challenges that come with that. So in order for my skiff to like play well with other skiffs, I have to dedicate some rack space for this kind of stereo audio signal routing that needs to happen from skiff to skiff. For the longest time, I was absolutely delusional about uh, how I wanted to keep everything in the Eurac format. No computer interface, no external MIDI, and definitely no guitar effects. Uh, I'm not sure why I was so close-minded. I think it had to do with a bit of like OCD where I wanted to keep everything inside and contained within this skiff. But the reality is there are great sounding pedals, especially desktop pedals like my H90 from Eventide, where it pairs so well with synths and even uh, digital audio workstations. I swear uh, during the pandemic and shortly after, these things were so hard to get your hands on. It's nothing fancy, uh, and it's just another I.O. device to fly my Eurac signals in and out of the Eurac into a balanced or unbalanced uh, audio level signal. Super useful, especially, again, I can fly these sounds from my uh, granular skiffs and samplers and back and forth. Okay, now that we've got those boring utility modules out of the way, let's talk about the big boy 3U modules. Again, all from IntelliGel.
Planck is, as I understand it, uh, kind of a collab that IntelliGel did with another company. My guess is that that company was more versed in uh, acoustic modeling. Uh, it's called Applied Acoustic Systems, if I can see their name right on there. Anyway, I have a soft spot for Planck because it was one of the very first modules that I bought and it was relatively an easy module to understand. Uh, I also love the built-in attenuverters here, uh, which I took for granted until I ran into other modules that don't have them and require like another entire module, uh, namely another VCA, which is why you need so many VCAs. I won't go into super detail about how physical modeling works. Uh, it's just that it's a super interesting way to generate acoustic sounds, uh, not from samples, but using math, uh, using resonator and an exciter uh, to create a different flavor than say like analog drums or sample drums or uh, uh, sample sounds or uh, so forth. In the early days of my module collection, I wanted to be very conscientious and deliberate about each modules to represent a certain type of synthesis. So one analog, one digital, one granular. And so this one happens to be uh, a module that's physically modeled. So on to the quad VCA, and as VCAs goes, it's a damn fine one pack with tons of features. Because even like VCAs, I made a rule for myself to like never purchase the same type of modules. So with VCAs, I made a point to buy it from, say, IntelliGel, a VCA from Mutable Instruments, and Erica Synths, and as many different like module makers as possible to experience variety, not just in terms of the function, but the way they choose to put knobs and other kinds of features onto the module itself. This VCA has all the usual features, but it's like supercharged with individual like level control, uh, bipolar CV attenuators with like linear and exponential control and LED indicators. Uh, so I think it's sort of like the king of VCAs, if there was such a thing. Uh, it's as versatile and as useful as I think it gets. Okay, so now we're getting to the meat of the skiff. Uh, hopefully you made it this far. Thank you for continuing to watch this. Uh, these three modules are, you know, wide and meaty, choke full of possibilities. So my thoughts on the Rubicon 2 is that it's powerful, open-ended, terrific sounding analog oscillator that demands your time, and it will reward you for it. It's nice and wide, so you're not squinting. It's got tons of modulation points, and honestly, you're limited only by your creativity. Rubicon passes all the desirability tests too. After all these years, when I see it, I'm thinking, man, I need to be using this more often. I mean, that's probably the ultimate compliment for a piece of gear, is when you see it, there isn't this like disdain, but rather a renewed commitment to want to spend more time with it. I did an entire video on the Shapeshifter after I watched that movie Dungeons and Dragons. Shapeshifter is the digital VCO companion to the Rubicon, if you could call it that. So uh, unlike the Rubicon, which is an analog oscillator, uh, the Shapeshifter is a digital uh, oscillator um, with a wide range of choices that doesn't really get much better. And it offers like a complete different sonic buffet uh, from the Rubicon. Having said that, the shapeshifter definitely gives you a new meaning of the word menu diving, as I often find that I have to take notes to remember what I did last time. And every time I come back to it, like it takes a bit of time just jarring my memory to remember what does what. It's definitely not the most user-friendly. But the shapeshifter does not need to make any apologies. It's powerful, it's deep, it can give you so much to explore. You're not getting into the shapeshifter to like play through some easy listening presets. It's hardcore, it's complex, and you need to really sit up and pay attention. But it's incredibly rewarding when you take the time to let it come to you and simmer in your brain a bit and make those creative connections and then patch them in and see how they sound. So Morgasmatron is an analog dual multimode self-oscillating VCF and a crossfader and you guessed it, by IntelliGel.
And finally, the Quadrax. Quadrax is an envelope generator, which is kind of a sort of an understatement, uh, if I do say so myself. It's described as a quad function burst generator LFO with the CV matrix, uh, which is an apt description, I think, of the Quadrax. So again, rounding off this all intelligence skiff is this module that can shape your sound source. And I couldn't think of more fun module than the Quadrax to kind of round this off. Uh, especially the burst mode. Uh, it's so fun to just get quick movement and complexity in your mix. For me, Quadrax is just another like awesome example of IntelliGel and how they try to balance like depth with usability, all at the same time giving the module its own personality. I think this is a great segue into what I call the module personality. Unless you're like Dofer, where it's super cut and dry, absolute, minimalist, functional. Other companies like IntelliGel, they bring their unique personality to essentially fundamental functions and tools in modular synthesis. Now, the more you play with their modules and the more you begin to see their intent and what they care about. They have a creative vision and for us as users, we take that and in turn, take it to the next level uh, with our creative expression. IntelliGel is definitely premium for sure. They're also deep, they guide you, uh, they won't hold your hand and babysit you the whole time either. Some are quite complex and only with a lot of engagement and practice will you feel creatively rewarding. I'm a big fan of IntelliGel, but what say you? Uh, let me know what you think of IntelliGel, if you own any of their modules, your experiences with it. Leave them in the comments below, and uh, I will see you guys next time.